a year and a half ago, he had a brain aneurysm, a stroke, he couldn't talk, he couldn't remember anything, and yet he's in the studio with me. Welcome to Travis, pastor of Impact Church in Scottsdale, Arizona. So good to have you here, man. Uh, it's so great to be here. What a great church and ministry and uh, honor and a privilege to be here. Travis, uh, I love uh, the authority that you speak with and your story is very unique, but it's crazy. Do you want to just take us into wh what happened a year and a half ago? Yeah, uh, it, it really came out of nowhere. It, it, was a, it was a Monday. Well, if I rewind, Friday, we released, our church released its first worship song mm. into the world mm. um, called He Is the Miracle. And actually, it was a collaboration with a worship leader in the States. His name is Joel. Mm. Um, and uh, and Joel wrote a song, Promises, with Ma Maverick City, and he crushed it. And mm. so we did this feature. And mm. so that was our first song, Impact Worship, ever, mm. that we did. Mm -hmm. And then on Sunday, that song, it climbed all the way to number one mm. on the iTunes uh, music charts. Mm. So we were celebrating and having a great time. So we're, we're really riding on like this big high, mm -hmm. you know, through the weekend. Then on Monday is when I had this brain aneurysm and, and hemorrhagic stroke. And so uh, it came out of nowhere. I didn't have any health conditions, any health issues. I wasn't on any medication. Um, came out of nowhere and it came fast and it came hard mm -hmm. and, it, and it about took me out. I, I ended up being taken by ambulance to one hospital and then taken by helicopter to a second hospital. Uh, we, we call them level one trauma centers. It's basically where you go if you're going to die. They get you to a level one trauma center. And, um, and yeah, so it started with me and my daughter. We were going to go to a grocery store. Mm -hmm. And I had a handful of grapes. <laughs> and I just started dropping grapes. Mm -hmm. And I was like, that's weird. I'm like, why am I dropping grapes? Mm -hmm. And um, we actually drove to the store. Uh, while, while I was having a stroke, I just didn't know it. And so once, uh, once we got to the, to the grocery store, my wife came and picked me up. I had texted her that I'm dropping grapes, but I don't really know why. And, um, and, and so she panicked, like, like you, you need to, you need to go to the hospital. And she came and picked me up and, and went to the hospital. And, and so from the dropping grapes, uh, moment until, that being hospitalized was maybe maybe an hour Crazy. total in time yeah Crazy. and then what happened what happened next yeah and w w what was the process yeah so what well, the, the 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 physical process was i started dropping grapes then i started slurring my words then i then i lost my memory then i lost cognition and motor skills and um, so, so now I'm hospitalized. I can't, I can't talk. I can't think correctly. I can't remember the type of stroke I had is, was in the basal ganglia area, which is the brain stem. And it's the worst place to have a brain bleed in the brain. And so as I'm, as I'm, you know, bleeding in the brain, uh, it, it, it's just, um, it, it's becoming challenging for me to, uh, to, uh, to think, to remember, the doctor asked me uh, while I was in the hospital. They, they would come and test me every hour on the hour, and they would they would ask me the same questions. You know, when were you born? What's your wife's name? What are your children's names? Same questions. I didn't know every time they asked, Correct. and so they they asked me this one time. You know, what are your children's names? And and I said I I looked at the doctor and I said forty. And I looked at my wife, she was standing right by me, and I looked up at her, and, I, and we both had tears. And I said, uh, I said, count it all joy. Mm. And the doctor said, what did he say? And my, and my wife and I, with, with weep, <laughs> you know, tears, uh, she said, he's quoting a scripture from, yeah. from the Bible that yeah. says to count it all joy when you fall into various trials, which is crazy. Because yeah. like, I can't even think to remember my kids' names. Yeah. I can't remember my wife's name. I can't remember my own birth date. Yeah or when I was born or anything, but I could remember scripture. Out of the overflow of the heart. Yeah, right, right. Speaks, I, yes, yeah. and that's right. And the, the God's word will never return void. And so so, so from, from, from that journey, uh, it, it began a journey of, of uh, rehabilitation um, and, and, and God, God doing the miraculous, <laughs> but also me uh, putting in the work. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
My next question was actually going to be on how did, did you find the strength, which obviously came from within and you knowing scripture yeah. through that process of actually getting, you know, better. How did you maintain that strength? Well, first of all, I think, um, I think, I think of scripture where, you know, when we, when we are weak, he is strong. Mm. I, I think of when, when we're down to nothing, God's up to something. Mm -hmm. I, I think of, um, you know, you, you, it, it's, it's God, but it's you, but it's also the people around you mm. and, um, your support system. And we have a massive support system mm. and my wife is my biggest supporter in championing <clears throat> me. And, and, um, and you know, we, we believe God, we believe God for the impossible. We believe God to do the miraculous and why not? And, and so, um, we, we also believe that um, we, we believe God can do a miracle in an instant. Yeah. Of course we do. Yeah. But we also believe that most of the time <laughs> as humans, we want God to do his part, but we don't want to do our part. Yeah. God, do your part. Heal my marriage, yeah. but I don't want to work on it. Yeah. I want you to fix her. I want you to fix him, mm -hmm. but I don't want to work on me. They're not, I'm not the problem. They're the problem. Mm -hmm. Or God set me free from this addiction, but I don't want to go to rehab for it. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to put myself <laughs> into an institution because... You know, so we want God to do his part, but, but I think in every, um, and everything that you believe for and fight for, you, you've also got to do your part. Yeah. Yeah. So how did that, how did that change your marriage and, and your family? Because obviously not remembering your kids' names, but under, but, but knowing scripture, what, what did that do with your marriage, with the relationship with your kids? Because obviously now, from what I hear, you've got a brilliant relationship with your kids, mm -hmm. with your wife. But what was that process like? Um, I, I, I think anytime you experience, you know, desperation mm. for a miracle as a family, because mm. a lot of times we have desperation individually. Mm. But when you, as a family, we are desperate. Mm. God, we need you desperately. Mm. And then to to see through through a process, it wasn't in an instant, it wasn't overnight. It was in a process, and it's still a process uh, to heal. But I, I think th that really unifies your family around just like what God can do, the power of God. Like wow, l l look what He can actually do, yeah. and our love for one another it, it grows. But our love for God, I think, in the intimacy. Uh, of God, it, it, it grows. Yeah. Yeah. You were talking about community already mm -hmm. and that the community was so crucial. Um, what, what was some practical things that the community around you did that helped you and that helped your family? Yeah. Um, I, I think number one is, is prayer. I mean, mm -hmm. it, obviously, mm -hmm. but not because, <laughs> yeah. because we know we should be praying, but oftentimes it's, it's the last thing that we do. But I think, um, I have a, a, a church family and they begin to pray. I, I showed up when I, when I was released from the hospital and I, when I came um, home, I had thousands and I mean thousands of handwritten cards, thousands of handwritten cards. I'm praying for you. And they, they weren't just like, hope you feel better, <laughs> sign their name. I mean, they were like super detailed prayers, scriptures, uh, you know, all those things add to your your desire and your determination to mm -hmm. to pursue mm -hmm. um, health and wholeness. Mm -hmm. And and so I think prayer, I think my family, I think my church family, our community, I think rehab. I was in six different, um, I was doing six different therapies right. for six months, six right. days a week. Yeah. Uh, it was a full, my therapy was a full-time job. Yeah. I was doing speech therapy because yeah. my, my, my tongue is numb and my cheek is numb and my jaw half of it's numb yeah. and so i'm having a hard time talking yeah. and so my doctor found out that i was a preacher mm -hmm. and so then she had this idea that i as part of my speech therapy would come preach to her come you know so i'm so preaching sad. to this doctor who's not not a christian yeah. but it's just me and her and i'm preaching like i would preach on a yeah. sunday yeah. and I, I think all of those things the the support system the infrastructure they all play into yeah. um wholeness so w w what's your condition right now? Is it fully healed? Are you fully back or mm -hmm. do you still have some, some numbness? Or yeah, what's I'm, that? it's a good question. I'm, I'm still numb. The whole right side of my body is still numb. So it's wow. been about a year and a half since the stroke, November 14th of yeah. 2022. Yeah. Um, I'm not as numb as I used to be. 
I would say the first six months, you, you, you could have put a knife in my arm and I, and I wouldn't have known. Um, today, the whole thing is still numb, but it's more like um, if you've had a foot fall asleep and yeah. the, that, that yeah. numb, tingly feeling, it's like that maybe times two. Yeah. It's, it's, okay. it's just numb, tingly all the time. So now it actually hurts a l sensations different on this side than this yeah. side because now I can, I can feel... I can't feel like I can feel on this side. Mm -hmm. And then what I do feel, it's amplified because you just have those nonstop like yeah. tingles, yeah. the nerves, you know, trying to fire. So, um, but I'm there. I, I would say other than that, I would say other than that, I'm 95% um, whole. Yeah. I, I would say um, in, in many ways, I'm better mm -hmm. than before the stroke mm -hmm. because of my nutrition and you know my diet and my working out and i would say i have more energy and i'm more clear-minded yeah. a lot more than pre-stroke yeah. so I, I think there's benefits uh mm -hmm. you know i talked today about going through valleys that was a valley and yeah. and and i think w when you when, when you go through the valley mm -hmm. and knowing that you're not going to the valley and somebody needs to hear that today that he, he says though, though though i walk through the valley of the shadow of death mm -hmm. not to yeah. the valley right Come on. So we're going to keep on keeping on. Yeah. So, yeah. And yet the valley does leave scars, which yeah. we, we do live with for the rest mm -hmm. of our lives. And yet I love what you say that you're better than you were before. And yeah. that is absolutely incredible. That having that perspective is absolutely incredible. Now, um, I know our online community, there's people with maybe similar stories, maybe different stories that can relate to it. What would you, um, if, if there was one thing that you would say someone in your situations a year and a half ago, right now, what, what would that be? I, I, I mean, the first thing that comes to mind is one of the most quoted scriptures in the Bible, and that's Proverbs chapter three. And trust in the Lord with all your heart, lean not on your own understanding, and all your ways acknowledge him and he will make your path straight and and i think that that's it man trust in god don't trust don't don't listen to the voices don't listen to the news don't listen to what statistics say what studies say what yeah. even doctors say cuz doctors told my wife and i doc, when i couldn't talk the doctor told my wife this type of stroke it the 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 effects are irreversible so when he, when I could not talk, he's telling my wife, he'll never talk. So my wife is saying, trust in the Lord and lean not on my own understanding. I'm not trusting in what he says, what he, they might be experts, but they're not God. They might be experts, but they're not God. God has the final word. So good. Travis, thank you so much. I know we could talk for hours, uh, I reckon, on this, but really, like your story is incredible. And honestly, that you always bring it back to God and say, trust in him and not on your own understanding that is absolutely incredible thank you so much for sharing this i really really appreciate it hey i don't know where you're at um with your walk with god but we would love to just help you in this walk as well so if you need anything that um where we can help you with if you want to get connected uh, travis talked about community we would love to help you to get connected to the body of christ hey just let us know um and you can write us on ic f.ch slash connect and we um, are really looking forward to hearing from you travis thank you so much for this talk i really appreciate it that was it for today <laughs>